Hello grade 11 and welcome to the second video on electrostatics. This is a continuation of question number 3 and in this video we're going to take a look at question 3.2 which involves electric fields and electric field patterns. This question says two small identical spheres P and Q carry charges of positive 6 nanocoulombs and positive 2 nanocoulombs respectively and are placed 60 millimeters apart as shown in the diagram. So there's our 60 millimeters. In the same diagram, we can also see a 20 millimeters between Q and a point in space called R. Question 3.2.1 says, define electric field at a point. Very often learners, instead of defining electric field at a point, define just an electric field as a space or region of space in which you would experience an electric field or the electric electrostatic force. But in this case, we're specific referring, re, sorry, specifically referring to an electric field at a point. So therefore, the correct answer to 3.2.1 is the electric field strength at a point is the electrostatic force experienced per unit positive charge placed at that point. It's very important that, important that you use this definition instead of the vague definition of an electric field. And for this, you're going to get two marks or none at all. Question 3.2.2 says, draw the electric field pattern for sphere P as an isolated charge. So we are pretending that this charge is not there, that P is on its own, and we remember that it is a positive charge. Remember field lines go out of positive and into negative. They are perpendicular to the surface of the charge and they do not cross each other at all. So based on that, the correct diagram that you should draw for 3.2.2 is this one that you can see displayed to the screen. The mark allocation is as follows. You're going to get one mark for the correct direction, that is away from the charge. One mark for the correct shape, so we have straight lines going out of the charge that are perpendicular to the surface of the charge. Lastly, you're going to get a mark for ensuring that no field lines cross each other or go into the sphere. If the shape is incorrect, you're going to get 0 out of 3. So please be careful and make sure that you obey all of the rules that we apply to electric field lines. Now we go on to question 3.2.3. It says, R is a point on the line joining the two spheres 20 millimeters from sphere Q. Calculate the magnitude of the net electric field at point R. So we would like to know what the electric field at this point, point R, is. In order to do so, we're going to have to first find out what the electric field is at point R as a result of P, and then we're going to have to find out what the electric field at point R is as a result of Q. Once we are done with that, then we're going to use vector addition to determine the electric field or the net electric field at R. So step number one, we say that E is equal to, so we're going to say E is equal to KQ divided by R squared. We're going to start off by calculating the electric field at R as a result of P. That's going to be KQR divided by R squared, where that is the distance between P and point R. For now, we're going to ignore sphere Q. We're going to pretend that Q is not there at all, because we would only like to know what is experienced at R as a result of P. Into this formula, we're going to plug in 9 times 10 to the power of 9 in the place of K. In the place of QR, we have 6 times 10 to the negative 9 coulomb. Remember, nano is not the correct, or nano coulomb is not the SI unit of charge. So we need to convert to the correct unit. We take all of this and we're going to divide by the distance between P and R. That is going to be 60 millimeters minus 20, which gives us 40 millimeters.
but millimeter is not the correct unit of distance. We need to divide by 1000 or multiply by 10 to the power of negative 3. And then we take this distance and we're going to square it. Don't forget to square, it's something that we often forget. Plugging all of this into our calculators, we obtain an answer of 33750 newtons per coulomb. Now that we're done with sphere P, we can take a look at sphere Q, and we can forget about sphere P. When we take a look at sphere Q, we see it's 20 millimeters away from R, so we're going to say the electric field as a result of Q is equal to K, the charge of Q divided by the distance between Q and R squared, that is 9 times 10 to the power of 9, multiplied by... 2 times 10 to the power of negative 9, all of this divided by 20 times 10 to the negative 3 or divided by 1000 squared. Don't forget the square. In the end, the answer is going to be equal to 45000 newtons per coulomb. And these are the electric field at R as a result of the separate charges. Now we need to think about direction, okay? Let's go ahead and let's choose to the right as the positive direction. That means to the left is the negative direction. If we are looking at the electric field as a result of Q at point R, in which direction is it going to be? Well, in order to determine the direction of an electric field, we place a positive test charge at that point and we say what is going to happen to this positive charge as a result of this charge over here well since positive is repelled by positive we know that the test charge is going to be pushed towards the left as a result of q therefore the electric field at r as a result of q is going to equal to 45000 newtons per coulomb to the left. Now we can go and take a look at sphere P again. We cover Q because we're not interested in Q at this point, and we say to ourselves, as a result of this positive charge at P, no, 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 yes, positive charge at P, where is this negative charge, sorry, where is this positive test charge at R going to move? Since this positive is going to repel the positive test charge, we know that it's going to move towards the right. Therefore, the direction of the electric field at R as a result of P is going to be towards the right. So we go ahead and we write down that this is to the right. Now remember, we have chosen towards the right as positive, and we're interested in finding the net electric field. To find the net electric field at R, we're going to take EP as positive and we're going to subtract the charge at, sorry, the electric field at Q, the magnitude of the electric field at Q. That is 33750 minus 45000. This gives us a final answer of negative 11250, that is uh, 11,250 newtons per coulomb, which we can interpret, and it is then going to be 11250 newtons per coulomb. And since we chose to the left to be the negative direction, we're going to say that this is towards the left. So, based on that, the answer to question 3.2.3 .3 is going to just be, therefore, the magnitude is going to equal to 11250 newtons per coulomb. We don't need to include the direction because the question only asks for the magnitude of the electric field at point R. So, for this question, marks are going to be allocated as follows. Unfortunately, there's no mark for the formula. Normally, there is a mark for the formula. But in this case, no mark was awarded for the formula. You need one mark for substituting here, one mark for substituting for the electric field of Q. Then you're going to get one mark for subtracting. And lastly, you're going to get one mark for your final answer. 
it seems as though there's a mark missing let's just see one two three four yes there is a mark missing which means in the end so let's just run through that again substituting substitution substitution subtracting and then the final magnitude but then we're also going to award one mark for the formula and that gives us a total of five marks so a mark was in fact awarded for the formula so we can now go on to the very last problem, question 3.2.4. It says an electron is placed at point R. Calculate the net force experienced by the electron by using the answer from question 3.2.3. I'm not too sure why there's a repeat of the question, so I'm just going to erase that. But we can now use the answer and this formula E equals F divided by the charge. The point charge in this case is a negative charge. So remember, whenever we go and we find the, um, or we plug into these formulae, we don't plug into the formulae the negatives if the charges are negative. But we remember from the table of constants that the charge on an electron has a magnitude of 1,6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulomb. So into this formula, we're going to substitute the magnitude of the net electric field. We're going to say this is equal to the force is what we're looking for. The charge is 1,6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. We multiply up and we find out that the force is equal to 1,8 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons. This is force and therefore it is measured in newtons. But look, they did not say calculate the magnitude of the force. They actually said calculate the net force. So that means we need to include direction because force is a vector quantity. Now, the direction of an electric field, which in this case, the net electric field is to the left, that is the direction in which a positive test charge will move. In question 3.2.4, we are looking at a negative test charge. So if a positive test charge is going to move towards, towards the left, it of course means that a negative test charge is going to experience a force towards the right in the opposite direction of the electric field. And therefore, the answer to question 3.2.4 is 1,8 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons to the right. You're going to get one mark for your formula, one mark for substitution, and one mark for your final answer with the direction since they did not specifically ask for the magnitude of the force. And grade 11, this brings us to the end of question number 3. In the next video, we're going to take a look at question number 4, which is a question on electromagnetism. I hope to see you there.